Okay, so yeah, like I mentioned before, this is a game of a uh, Fide roughly 1300 as white. Uh, and black is a better player. It doesn't really matter how much better. He could be 1350, he could be 2650. Um, but the point is we just try to, look, try to look at white's play and see what kind of mistakes a 1300 roughly will make in a, uh, in a standard time control game. Because like in Blitz, like I mentioned before, you know, hanging queens, hanging mates, whatever, pre pretty much par for the course. But in a standard time control game, a 1300 is not going to exactly, you know, just write out hang a piece, usually. So what type of mistakes are they making to, to lead, it, lead them to, to defeat? So we're going to look at this game and see what's happening. All right. So again, we're not going to look at every single white move and try to find the optimal move. We're, we're just going to try to see where white made major mistakes. So, you know, if a move, it, you know, if I could take advantage with the move, but instead it's roughly equal, we're not going to really beat white up too much about it. So, okay, we're going to start. So, okay, e4, okay, best move in the world. c5, best move in the world. Knight f3. Okay, it's good. this move's not that good. Okay, so d6. Okay, so bishop c4 is not that common, but okay, whatever. It's fine. c3 is fine. Okay, d3 is fine. Okay, bishop e3 is a little odd. So, like, this move isn't, like, bad in and of itself, but, um, notice that it, you're not exactly sure you want, where you want to put this guy at the moment. So I always make a big deal about, like, being flexible. And so, you know, I mean, it's pretty clear that white probably wants to castle, so there's no real harm in castling. Um, and okay, maybe he wants to develop this knight and he wants to get the bishop out first, but it's not sure that he really wants to come here. You know, it's very possible it could want to come here, or it could want to come here. So, so by developing the bishop out immediately, you're kind of, you know, closing your options a bit. But uh, okay, I mean, it's it's not actually a, a bad move per se. So, okay. Uh, so bishop three, knight seven. Okay, so h three. Uh, so now, now that you put your bishop on e three, you want to kind of preserve it by playing h three. But again, I mean, it's not really so tragic if you allow this knight g4, knight takes c3. You can take back with a pawn even and get this half open uh, f file, and you can have further control over d4. When you push d4, you can end up taking with the f pawn and then fixing your pawn structure. And you have control over f4, and you know, it's not the worst thing in the world. So h3 is a little bit of a time waster, but okay, uh, again, it's not tragic. I'm not going to really complain about that either. B7, okay, knight d2, okay. Again, it's not entirely clear you want your knight on d2. It's possible you might want to play like a4 and knight a3. But okay, I mean, again, he's just developing. That's fine. Queen c2, queen c7, bishop b3, okay. So he's kind of trying to maybe reposition this bishop to, to c2, and he realizes that maybe b5 is going to come with tempo. So like bishop b3 is kind of like a wasted move, but it's actually a reasonable move. Um, and so you, you can't really criticize it at all. Uh, b5, c4. Okay, so this move is like probably the first move you can actually legitimately criticize. Because, um, you know, a black kind of has this natural queenside expansion with a6, b5. Not, natural queenside expansion that comes from the Sicilian. Um, so you generally don't want to play on the side of the board that your opponent's trying to play on. And, and this move c4 really just takes away all important squares from white's pieces, right? So now by playing c4, like, this bishop is blocked, this knight is blocked, he's giving up this square, it doesn't really do anything harmonious for white's position, and contrarily, it kind of helps black's initiative get stronger on the queen side, and especially when white has, you know, a couple of decent-looking options, white could, you know, castle here, maybe even queen e2 makes some sense, um, but I'm, I'm not really sure why White felt the need to play c4 because, I mean, he's probably going to move this bishop back to c2 at some point anyway, and then maybe try to go like d4, e5, and try to get this bishop on this new diagonal. So, so that type of idea seems more reasonable, um, but, but this move c4 it can probably be categorized as a mistake. Oh, but again, I mean, he, he's not exactly losing by force after c4, so... Um, but it's really the first move I think that is chastisable. Okay, so bishop b7, and, and now notice that, like, he's kind of putting pressure on e4, and, and you know, if he, if, he, if he takes with the pawn, you can't really take with the pawn. I mean, not that you'd want to necessarily, but just saying that it's not even an option, really. 
Okay, so he plays queen c2, and now his bishop is kind of looking a little silly. Um, but okay, I mean, it's not, not the worst in the world. But notice how it's like move 11 and white still hasn't castled yet. Yet white had the option as early as move... Uh, actually, as early as move 4 to castle. But notice on moves 4 through 11, he decided to make other moves other than castling. A, a little suspicious. You, you would have thought he would have had time in one of those 7 moves to, to find the time to castle, but okay. That's why he's 1300. Okay, so castle. A3. Okay, this move is almost suicidal in a way. And you think, okay, well, how can this move be suicidal? Well, the problem is that now white's king is still in the center, and black all of a sudden is, is going to be trying to get this guy start starting to roll down, down, uh, down white's throat. And so this move a3 doesn't really accomplish anything whatsoever. Like, it has no benefit. And so uh, White probably should play a move like Bishop F4, again, kind of biting the bullet and admitting that Bishop E3 was probably wrong to begin with. Um, but the idea of Bishop F4 is simply to, to pin this pawn and, and prevent D5 for a move. Because actually Black is starting to just threaten to take a bunch of space. Because right now Black has more space in the, in, in the queen side, but pretty soon Black is starting to take more space in the center as well. and. White doesn't really have any compensation for the fact that he's just giving black more space. So white's, by playing bishop f4, is kind of fighting for dark squares. And, and so if black unpins his queen and plays d5 eventually, okay, well then maybe you have some, some stuff on e5. Yeah, again, don't worry about what the computer recommends. We're not trying to play like 3300s here. We're just trying to play slightly stronger than 1300. Okay, so anyway. Um, okay, so a3 is, is definitely a lemon. Okay, but again, he's not losing by force yet. Okay, so rook fc8, so black's kind of just piling on the pressure, and, and now this d5 move is going to get kind of annoying. So white finally decides the castle. Bishop c6. I'm not exactly sure what black's doing here, but... Uh, I mean, it makes some sense, I guess. Okay, so here... Um, so here, a white's probably not doing terribly. I mean, he's probably slightly worse. So part of the thing, uh, when, when you're coming to conclusions in positions is you kind of want to have like an internal evaluation. And so, like in this position, you know, white should kind of realize that, okay, maybe the opening hasn't gone as well as I could have hoped. You know, this bishop kind of sucks, this queen, I'm not really sure what it's doing, it's kind of opposite this rook. You always have to be a little bit worried whenever that's, that's occurring. Uh, you know, my pawns aren't exactly the most fluid of... Of structures. My, my bishop's a little odd on e3. I mean, it, it, it's kind of good, but at the same time, it's not really doing anything per se. Uh, I don't really have any useful pawn advances. My knights are kind of silly looking at each other. Okay, my rooks are connected, but I'm not really sure what they're doing. They're kind of still stuck on their original squares. Um, so, okay. So white, you know, in general, can't be too happy with how it's gone, but at the same time, okay, he's not downing material. Um, and, and, you know, Black's uh, development isn't, you know, something to cheer about either. Um, but kind of having that internal count in, in terms of, you know, how you feel your position is doing is important. Because it can kind of help you to make more accurate decisions later on. You know, if you're slightly worse and you see this a trade that, you know, can allow you to, to get into a, a fairly equal position, you might be more likely to do it than, say, if you thought you were much better. Um, and it might cause you to make a better decision than if you had an incorrect evaluation. So White should probably realize he's slightly worse here, but okay, it's, it's nothing tragic. Um, but, but again, he needs to kind of think about what Black's trying to do here. Because White doesn't really have a any great plans other than to maybe kind of stop what Black's doing. Um, so, so, so notice that Black's just kind of trying to roll his pawns in the center w w with a quick d5 and put pressure on this pawn, and also potentially maybe try to play d4 and, and try to get this bishop uncomfortable. Um, okay, so... Uh, yeah, a move a move like pawn takes pawn is, is, is okay, but you have to understand that it, it kind of helps black get his pawns, pawns rolling. So after, say, pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn, now all of a sudden this move and this move is coming with a lot more force. 
and your bishop isn't actually any better off than it was before, if you think about it. Because, okay, it doesn't, it's not looking at c4, but at the same time, what's it really looking at? Pretty much nothing. And there's no way to kind of break up this bulwark of, G, of f7, e6. So you have to be careful that when you kind of discover your bishop that you don't actually make it harder for yourself to stymie black's counterplay. So c takes b5 is actually another mistake. But what, what, what white did is probably even worse than that because he kind of took a piece away from the action in the center and moved it to the side. So he, he ended up playing this move knight h2. Uh, okay, so I mean, at least he had a plan. His plan was to play f4. Oops, that's not a good arrow. His plan was to play f4 uh, and kind of fight for the center with his pawns. But the problem is black's way ahead in terms of, um, in terms of tempi in, uh, in fighting back in the center. So after this move, d5, uh, white's already in some trouble. White's already in some trouble. So uh, white took, which is reasonable. Black took. A and now, and now it's a little tricky because all of a sudden black's pieces are kind of springing to life. This bishop could easily come to d6 and, and form a battery on this diagonal. This bishop is going to get really active really soon. Uh, black kind of threatening to play c4. So the question is what to do here. So, you know, one idea might be, okay, to kind of remove this pawn from the game and take here. But then you create this isolated pawn on, on d3, and it's not clear that uh, white has any real compensation for this after, say, you know, knight takes pawn. Um, because now black can kind of form a new target and, and concentrate his efforts on, on trying to win this pawn. And it'll be very hard for white to play d4 ever to exchange it because black can always push through with c4 and then this pawn on d4 is very weak. It limits the scope of this bishop and this knight's a good blockader. So probably better than that is kind of just try to get this bishop out of town once and for all. Unfortunately, this queen c2 move is, is kind of hindering where this bishop probably wants to go. I mean, ideally, you'd probably like to, you know, play something like bishop d1, bishop f3 and, and try to challenge this guy. Uh, but since your queen's poorly placed, maybe a move like bishop a2, just so that c4 doesn't come with tempo. And then after someone take, take c4, maybe you get like your knight to f3. Uh, sorry, this knight to f3. Um, again, just trying to fight for central squares. And then you can always defend this pawn again with, with bishop to b1. And, and now you're maybe even ready to play e5 at some point and, and try to develop some sort of, you know, battery along this diagonal. Um, but you kind of have to make do with what's going on. Because, I mean, black is, you know, definitely better here. He has more space. Your pieces are being kicked around. But, okay, I mean, you know, you're fighting for squares, which is what's important. Okay. So, let's go back. Okay, so you play f4, which is already probably, uh, probably really bad, actually. Because now, after this move, c4, take, take, um, it's really unclear what, uh, what white intends to do. So after white takes on d5, if black simply recaptures on d5, and now white plays a move, okay, well, this bishop, you know, probably has to go to a2, and then say bishop c5, with the idea that after bishop c5, Knight takes c5. We're coming into d3. And notice that bishop takes c4 just loses to a move like, say, knight fe4. Or sorry, knight ce4, because of the pin. Um, so this is just really bad. Notice that, for example, b3, queen c5. Sure king h1 and this is actually checkmate mate so if you guys didn't see that variation that's a pretty bad one and another reason why f4 was not really the best move in conjunction especially with this move h3 that we played all the way back on move seven so notice that h3 in and of itself wasn't terrible but you know in conjunction with f4 the fact that your king is kind of terrible you're getting mated so uh white's actually in real trouble okay but if we fast forward a couple of moves Okay, all of a sudden, in this position, 
here, uh, all this is pretty much forced, by the way. I didn't mean to go through it that quickly, but okay. I mean, after after take, the idea is, you know, if he takes, you, you have this bishop to take back with. And so he takes the bishop, and you can't take with the pawn because your queen's hanging, so you have to take with the queen. And okay, so he takes your queen, you gotta kind of take back, it's fourth. And then he takes the pawn, and then okay, you know, might as well win a pawn. So he took on b3, and all of a sudden, after this whole exchange, what happened? Well, actually, we're up a pawn here, somehow. Uh, so it's five versus four, knight, knight, bishop, knight, knight, bishop, rook, 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 rook. Okay, so, so, so somehow black misplayed this, and, and white's all of a sudden fine again. Okay, so this is another very important thing. And that is, you know, for some reason, the, the first part of the game hasn't been going the way you expected it. But for some reason, you know, your valuation changes, you kind of have to update your, your thinking. Because, okay, white's up a pawn here. So he, he should be a lot more confident now than he was, uh, you know, say five moves ago. Okay, I mean, is, is he better? I, I don't know. I mean, maybe. Sure. Uh, I mean, black definitely has compensation, right? I mean, this knight is kind of weird. Even this knight's a little weird. Uh, black's rooks are going to get a lot more active than white's rooks. So, you know, uh, uh, black can already start playing moves like knight d5, hitting, hitting this and hitting this, and then rook b8 skewering the knight in the pawn so you know it's not even clear that maybe white can even hold on to his pawn but uh you know white's not being threatened with any immediate danger white's up a pawn so i, I can't imagine he's worse i can't imagine he's worse so okay so now as white we kind of recalibrated and said okay well maybe we didn't play the first you know 15 moves as accurately as we would have liked but Okay, somehow we're actually fine here. Somehow we're actually fine here. Um, and we, we probably are fine. So rook c2, okay, he, black gets his rook on the seventh. White plays bishop d4, which makes a lot of sense, defending b2 and getting the bishop off this undefended square. So it's always nice to get your pieces on defended squares. So this bishop is nicely defended now. Okay, rook b8, defending or attacking this knight. And now knight c1, can't really complain about knight c1. I mean, don't, don't really know where else this knight was going. I mean, I suppose it could go to a5. But, uh... But this knight is actually kind of trapped on a5. So you have to be a little careful. Like, it doesn't actually have an, another move after a5. So at least on c1, he's kind of trying to get it back into the game. So I, you can't really fault knight c1. Okay, bishop c5, so black's offering trade of bishops. Okay, so he takes, I mean, he, he, if, he, if he defends the bishop, then black can always take and then take on b2. So, so taking probably makes sense. Knight takes. Because now the question is, you, you can't really allow rook takes b2. Um, so how do you defend that? Well, you can't really play rook a2, you can't really play rook f2. Um, so the question is, does b4 make sense? And b4 is actually a, a good move, because not only are you removing the threat to this pawn, but you're also doing it with a gain of tempo. So it's, it's an attack and defense move, and attack and defense moves are often the linchpins to making your position uh, actually a playable one. So b4 was actually a great move here. Uh, okay, so b4, knight, b4, knight c4. Okay, so black's position looks menacing, but uh, if white can somehow trade a pair of rooks, he's actually doing quite fine. Quite fine. So knight d3. Okay, so he's trying to get the knight off of the first rank. It makes perfectly reasonable sense. Rook d8. Okay, now... Now is uh, the moment we've all been waiting for, the 1300s blunder of the game. So the guy sees, okay, well, my knight's attacked, I gotta move it. Problem is, as soon as he touches this knight, black says mate in seven. Because when this knight moves to e5, now after rook to d2, you can't really stop this, this mate that ended up happening. You can throw in a, a few use, you know, useless hanging of, of, of material, but this is pretty much over. So yeah, if he was gonna, if he was gonna move this knight, he probably had to do it with, with some sort of tempo gain, say knight to e1. Um, 
I'm, I'm not sure that's optimal, but okay, at least he's not losing here after knight to e1. But if you look a little bit harder after rook to d8, what can we actually play here? Well, we can actually try to trade a pair of rooks while getting our knight out of take. So uh, a better move might have been um, rook f to c1. And the idea here is if rook takes, Check. Uh, we can actually play rook takes. And the point is if rook takes knight, we have a checkmate of our own. Check. Thanks to black's weak back rank. So if black takes, we simultaneously get to get our rook out and we also indirectly defend this knight, which is better than directly defending it because we don't have to move it right away and we get our rook out. So black would have to play something like rook e2 probably. Can't go to b2 because knight's attacking it. But if he goes to d2, he's kind of doubling the effect of this rook. So rook to e2 makes the most sense. But now notice that we still have this rook to c8 mate threat. So we actually don't have to move the knight again. And we can play a move like knight to f3. And now after, say, knight to h5 or something, we can play rook to c6. And then g6 or something, we can just play knight to c5. After knight takes f4, knight takes c4, rook takes c4, rook e1. OK, black probably will never win this endgame, you know, or shouldn't at least. Um, White's kind of ha has all his bases covered, so we sacrifice the pawn back. But um, but you know we're we're taking this guy. We have this two versus one queenside majority. Our knight is going to defend this this g two pawn ably, uh, and, and White probably has a pleasant end game here. So okay, I mean even if you know White didn't notice that this back rank mate idea was possible, and thought that he did have to move this knight. So again, this is kind of like a, a, a simple tactic. Well, I don't know if it was a simple tactic, but um, it's a tactic. Uh, so it, it probably would actually lead to a, a pleasant position for white. But okay, just noticing the fact that you can't really allow this to happen means that he, he probably should have thought about someplace else to move this knight. And so, um, and so, like I said, if not knight, to, or if not rook fc1, Probably knight to e1 makes the most sense. Again, just trying to defend this and also attack this rook so black doesn't have time to play rook d2. Um, you know, even even a move like knight f2 isn't like horrible. I mean, it's not great because uh, black could play like knight g3 and then you have to play rook d1 and then there's like a check and. Okay, I mean, like, black has a forced draw here at least and, and probably should go for more. Um, but he, even black has an opportunity to mess up here because, again, there's back rank ideas. So uh, he pr pretty much picked one of the worst moves on the board, actually. I mean, if, even if he just hung this knight for nothing, like, even if he just played a4, it would have been better than what he played. Because after 95, he's legitimately just getting mated with absolutely no way to defend it other than to throw in a few hanging pieces in order to do so. Um, but again, White was only a 1300 feet area rated player, and so he didn't notice that. Um, but I mean, if you look at the whole game as a whole, he, you know, he didn't really make too, too many mistakes. I mean, there's a couple of minor things here and there. Um, he, he kind of let Black get all that he wanted out of the opening. Uh, but but even, even after Black, you know, uh, let's say like around here when black was probably ha had a dominating position uh, black let it slip a few moves later and then in this position all of a sudden white is perfectly fine again so it's possible that white wasn't ready to kind of adjust to his new lease on life in being in a reasonable position again or maybe just the, the pressure of, of the game kind of got to him but these are the type of things that you can look for to try to improve as you're getting lower. Yeah, I don't think uh, rook dd2 after knight f2 quite fits because I can still play rook ad1. Just as a, a side. So yeah, after knight f2 and rook dd2, I can just play rook d1 and I'm actually fine here. Because again, you, you can't take because I mate. And if we trade, I'll take with a knight. 
So you can like take on F2 and then take on H3. But I probably shouldn't ever lose this endgame, right? Um, like if I just like rook F3 or something. Just defend all my pawns. It should be okay. Should be okay. 